I went out to get some lunch, and as I was walking home, uh, this question kind of dropped in my spirit. And the, the question is something along the lines of, uh, do humans, do people have action independent of external spirits influencing them? And first of all, I think that it's, it would, it's a question that we wouldn't think about very much because this sort of Americans have this sort of independent, self-sufficient presupposition that I'm in control, or at least I want to be in control as much as I possibly can. I'm going to do what I want to do to the very best of my ability. I wish I had a little bit more money so that I could be a little bit more in control of what I want to do. And um, maybe occasionally, like somewhere in Haiti or um, somewhere in Kenya or some, some crazy place, Afghanistan, I don't know, some crazy place. Maybe there's some demon somewhere that's, that's influencing somebody. But here in America, I am independent and I, I do to the best of my ability what I want. I think that that's a fair statement given my 41 years of experience living in this country and how people act, and how Christians act, okay? And so the, the, the question is, do people, and of course we have to keep in mind the lessons that we've learned from all of the videos talking about what is a spirit and then talking about the human spirit, um, where there are two kinds of human spirits and they're, they're, they're both human spirits but one is the old man and the other one is the new man the only way that a person has a new spirit is because the holy spirit is giving it to them right and it's a process it's not something that happens in a moment right so i'm going to read a bunch of different scriptures uh, I uh, I pray that you hang in with me because we're we're just going to be asking this question: Do people have independent action? And so we're gonna we're gonna apart from external spirits influencing them. And so we're gonna start with the the old man. And so this this describes everybody on the face of the earth um, who has not received the Holy Spirit. And it also describes you before you receive the Holy Spirit, okay? And so we're going to start in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, that was a Christian, where in time ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, a.k.a. Satan, a.k.a. the devil, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversion in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And here we, here we see the, the two essential ways that Satan tempts people. These lusty desires, feelings, urges, appetites um, of the flesh and of the mind. And so philosophical systems that justify my sin. I build up a little stronghold. Of course, I'm not going to call it a stronghold. I build up a, a whitewash and I say, ha ha ha, I proved that I'm right and everyone else is wrong. And it just makes us feel better about um, commissioning and being in the commission of our sins, right? Um, and there's all kinds of false philosophies. Every religion acknowledges that there are false philosophies, right? Um, okay, verse 4, Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And so, 
let's see the dichotomy that's painted by this verse. Number one, you were dead in sin, dead in trespasses. All right. You were walking in the lusts of your flesh and the desires of your flesh and of your mind. You were children of wrath. Or maybe you are children of wrath. Um, walking according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. If you ask people who do, who do not identify as Christians, do they um, walk according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience? I say, no, I do what I want to do. I do what I want to do. I am independent. I am in control. And I do what I want to do. Is, I mean, isn't that what they're going to say? They're, they're not going to say what the Bible teaches, that they are being played like a fiddle by the devil, that the lusts and desires, intuitions, right, imaginations that they have in their heart are, are not just them being independent. It is the devil supplying them. And we're going to see that through, through other verses, right? But then God intervenes, not by grace we are saved, and he, in verse 10, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He has a plan for us and he has a purpose for us. And so then instead of walking according to the devil's purpose, a.k.a. the prince of the power of the air, we're walking according to the purpose which God created for us. And that's why he renewed us in Christ Jesus to accomplish his purpose, not ours. Right. And so we see this immediate dichotomy of flesh and spirit. We're going to we're going to keep on seeing the same thing. OK, second Timothy Chapter 2, um, verses 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness, instructing those that impo- oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. And I think most people would acknowledge, like there are some people like, people who are diagnosed with schizophrenia or people who just seem like they're just crazy or they're this, like you can just like maybe tell like there's something wrong with somebody for whatever the wrong thing is. I think that most people would admit that there are some people that are in snares and in bondage. But, you know, like how prevalent is that really? And that certainly doesn't apply to me. That's like some, you know, Kenya or Haiti, maybe, maybe in some inner city somewhere, but not me, right? Not me. But so in this verse, again, we get a dichotomy. Um, We get people who are acknowledging the truth and thus escape the snare of the devil. Or we get people who have not God has not granted them repentance and they are in the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will to do what he wants, right? And we're going to see in the next verse, he's actually called the God of this world. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses three through four. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And so again, we're talking about people who are not believing in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. This is a picture of the old spirit, right? Old human, old human spirit is blinded. It's ruled by fear. It's defiled. It is an enemy of God. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And so, again, if you ask somebody who's in the flesh, are you blinded? Oh, no, 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 no. I have a PhD. I have a master's degree. I have a bachelor's degree. I'm wise. I have a phone that accesses satellites in orbit. Mm-mm-mm. No, am I blinded? Um, You're blinded, but I'm not blinded. Maybe you're blinded, but me, I have eyes to see, right? I mean, are they are they going to acknowledge and are they going to want to hear a doctrine that says that Satan plays them like a fiddle? If he wants them to sing high, they sing high. If he wants them to sing low, they sing low. <laughs> who, who wants to believe that? Who wants to accept that they are a puppet and a pawn and manipulated to the nth degree and played like a fiddle? Who wants to accept that? What Christian wants to accept that? What what any person who is alive on the face of the earth today, who wants to accept that? 
Raise your hand. Like, I don't think that there's anybody. I think that we like to think of ourselves as powerful and rational and capable. And if you put your mind to it, you can just do what you want to do. And you can make a name for yourself. And you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Some kind of thing. Certainly, absolutely an American delusion. Right? It's absolutely consistent with the American mindset and presuppositions. The American worldview. Okay, so now let's consider um, some more scriptures. Um, all right, let's go to Romans chapter 8, um, verses 1 through 14. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Is everybody in Christ Jesus? If you ask everybody, would they say they're in Christ Jesus? Of course not. And some people who would say they're in Christ Jesus, are they sealed by the Holy Spirit? No. No. They're the blind leading the blind, like they think that they're... They think that they're saved. They think because they go to church somehow that because they have a cross hanging on the wall or they have a the old family Bible sitting with, you know, layers of dust on it in the bookshelf. Somehow that saves them or something. Somehow God is impressed with that level of devotion. Okay. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Again, we immediately see the contrast. Flesh, old man, snare of the devil, under the dominion of Satan, blinded by the God of this world, and after the spirit. God has before ordained good works for you to walk in, which are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's not like we're striving in our own strength in order to accomplish it, right? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Again, a contrast. The law of sin and death, by which the, the unbelievers are condemned, and the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made me free from that death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of the sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after this flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They set their mind on the things of the world. Remember Jesus said, the Gentiles do seek after these things. Where am I going to get my clothes and my food and my water and my stuff for myself? The Gentiles set their minds on these things, right? They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And so now, remember, mind is human, human spirit. Our mind is in the human spirit. It is a spirit, okay? And so Paul is telling us that we have two things as Christians that we can set our mind upon. The flesh or the Holy Spirit, which is God, right? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spirit, spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal, carnal mind, the caramel mind, no. <laughs> because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be, right? And so, if you're not in the Holy Spirit, your mind is carnal. So, so we're, we're trying to imagine this like independent person who somehow the devil doesn't influence, even though he's the God of this world. He takes captive whom he will whenever he wants to. Even to Christians, like a roaring watch out for your adversary, the devil like a roaring lion, whom he may devour. Humble yourself before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you, James 4, 7, right? Um... And then we have God's, God's plan for us doing good works, us being filled with the Holy Spirit. And so like we're just trying to imagine this independent person that somehow doesn't belong to God. But here, here Paul is telling us the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law, neither indeed can it be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But the Bible only points to the picture, paints the picture of being in the flesh or in the spirit. There's not, there's no limbo in between land where I'm, I'm just independently acting and I'm just doing what I want to do to, uh, you know, I'm making moves and I'm watching out for number one because no one else is watching out for me. I have to watch out for number one. It's like all this, this smoke, you know, like a smokestack, like bellowing, belching out all of the smoke. Uh, a.k.a. philosophies of um, the American worldview. There is no independent action. Either you're carnal and you're not subject to the law and you're an enemy of God and you cannot please God, a.k.a. you belong to the devil and he controls you, 
or you do belong to God, your mind is not carnal, it is set on the things of the Holy Spirit, and therefore you're doing the good things that God created you in Christ Jesus to do long ago, okay? There is, there is no middle ground between the, all of these verses that we're reading. Okay, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Again, we immediately see the contrast between the two. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If the Spirit of God doesn't dwell in you, you're not in the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit. Like, if, you don't, if you're not on Mars, you're not on Mars. <laughs> right? You have to be on Mars in order to be on Mars. If, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. Okay? Uh, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. What a clear statement. Again, this is why I like to use the sealing and the indwelling, sealing as in S-E-A-L-I-N-G, the seal of the Holy Spirit as the measure of whether a person is born again and whether a person belongs to God or not. Because if you if you are sealed in the Holy Spirit, you belong to God and Satan, Satan can... can um, convince all the angels of heaven, if he can, to, to fight against God and fight against you, and they will fail, right? What did Jesus say in John? Um, it is my Father's will that I do not lose any of those whom he has given to me. He is stronger than anybody else, right? And so the heaven and hell can join together in a rebellion to snatch your soul and God is infinite, and they, even all together, though they would seem very big to us, they are finite. And I mean, c- compare compare the universe, which is pretty big, right? Compare the universe to God, who is utterly, utterly, utterly boundless. The energy, or the universe is subject to entropy. It's, it's waning in its energy. Its energy is decreasing. Its usable energy is decreasing over time. God has infinite energy and power and wisdom at his disposal at his disposal at all times, right? And so the, the, even though you compare this big thing to God, compared to him, it's nothing. It's, it's less than nothing. And so what does Paul say in Romans 8? I'm convinced that neither past nor present nor angel nor principality nor power, nothing in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Okay, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The, re- the way that Christians have life, if they do have life, is because of the Holy Spirit, period. Okay? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, if, right, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. If the spirit doesn't dwell within you, then that ain't gonna happen, right? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so we see a distinctive of the children of God is that the way that they live their life and order their life is they follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you can't possibly do that, can you? If, if you don't have a GPS receiver, then you can't follow the GPS receiver because you don't got it. But if you do got it, then maybe you can follow it. Or maybe you t- think that you're going to figure it out on your own or something. But you have to have the thing, which is the person, the Holy Spirit, who is very God of very God. And if you don't have God, then guess what? You ain't going to follow God, right? This is, the, this is the picture that the Bible is, is um, painting for us over and over again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 through 3. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so you're in Christ, but then... Your mind might theoretically be beguiled by Satan. Where's the independent action? Where's the, leave me alone, Satan. Leave me alone, God. Ha ha, I'm independent. I mean, that, Paul, Paul does not give any space for that kind of mindset in this verse at all. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 11. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set 
your affection on the things above and not on the things of the earth. Remember in Romans 8, we read that those who are in the flesh mind the things of the flesh. They can only think about physical things. They can only think about sensual things, their taste and their touch and their smell and their hearing and their sight, because that's all they have. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They have to rely upon what they have, and what they have is their physical senses, according to their own understanding, right? We're told through the power of the Holy Spirit, because God reveals these things to those who belong to him, Uh, to set our affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. Verse 3, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, and, the, you know, the the people who, unfortunately, like the Bethel, Jesus, the Bethel out of Redding, California people, so, you know, charismatic, um, the Mecca of charismania, um, they can't explain this verse because they say that, that Christians don't have a sin nature. Paul is saying, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanness and ordinate affection. Obviously, we're talking about sin, right? Evil, concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. They can't explain this verse, right? Because they pick their five verses and say, oh, we don't, we're, you're a new creation. You're a new creature. The old has passed away. The new has come, right? Those are verses, but those aren't the only verses. There are 33,000 verses, not five. You see what I'm saying? And so they can't explain this. They can't explain this passage because they say, oh, no, 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 you are new. And uh, if you have an, a sin nature, that is a doctrine of devils. Well, this... Paul, Paul, is t- Paul is telling you, um, don't use your third arm. Don't you do it. Don't you use your third arm because that would not be good. How can you use something that you don't have? I mean, someone telling you not to do something that you can't possibly do. Don't you go to Mars. Don't you do it. You better not go to Mars or you're going to go to hell. It's the mark of the beast. <laughs> something like that. If you can't go to Mars, then what a, what a worthless waste of a space of something to say. And so whenever Paul says, mortify, therefore your members which be upon the earth, it's because you have them and you need to act upon what he's saying and not that it's just doesn't exist. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Ah, speak the truth in love, Robbie. Jesus. Okay, verse 7. In which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Remember, this is kind of reminiscent of what we just read in Ephesians chapter 2, when we were dead in trespasses and sins. But now, put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after him that created him. Again, we see this two, this dual contrast. Old man new man, right? Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to end my uh, rant and my exhortation on Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. Again, like such a prolific teaching in the New Testament, um, this I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Where's the third way? Where's the, um, well, you know, I don't belong to God. You know, I'm not like, you know, going out on a mission field or something like that. But but the devil just cannot influence me because I just made that up right now. Where Where's it at? I mean, you can't look in the Bible for it because it's a prolific teaching. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things that ye would. And so even even, even the, the things that ye would, if you're supposing that you have independent action, there's actually, for those who are Christians who are sealed by the Holy Spirit, there's a war going on because the Holy Spirit is waging war against your sin nature. Again, Bethel. Bethelites cannot explain this verse, right? There's a war going on. They suppose, I'm floating on a cloud and I'm going, mm, even though I'm not Buddhist. <laughs> right? I'm just a good person and everything is just perfect peace and God is love. Well, Paul tells us in Galatians 5 and also in Romans 7, which we didn't read, there's a war going on. And so it's like if, if, if you don't think that there's a war going on inside of your heart, 
then you better ask yourself the question if you're a Christian or not, because Paul supposes that there's there's a war going on on in your insides, right? This is his doctrine. It ain't my doctrine. This then I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Again, if you don't have the flesh, how can this possibly happen? Right? If either you're old or you're new, period, and there is there is no sin nature and Holy Spirit at the same time, then this is not possible. How can the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh? It can't, right? Okay. The flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to the other so that you cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. And so now we, we start getting the, you know, coming to God in spirit and truth. We start getting one of the benefits of truth, which is God is, is telling us what the, the markers and the fruit of the sin nature is so that we can start recognizing it as we're living our life. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit... Now he's again contrasting the flesh and the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Okay. So in summary, people, there are two kinds of people in the world. Dead in trespasses. They are taken captive by Satan at his will to do his pleasure. They are blinded by Satan, who is called the God of this world. They follow the prince of the power of the air, walking according to the spirit that worketh in the sons of disobedience. As I already said, they're dead in their sin. They follow the lust of their flesh. They set their mind on the things of the world and not on the things of God. They don't... God accuses them. God says, repent, the kingdom of God is near. They don't want to set their mind on the things of God. They hate God. They want to just do whatever they feel like doing. That's how they live their life, right? And so um, this is the picture of this, the godless sin nature of people who are dead in sin and they're taken captive by Satan at his will, even though they say, no, 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 no. I do what I want to do and I am utterly independent and I just am free, free, free and I just do whatever I want to do. And, and you know... Remember that um, we read in um, Ephesians chapter 2, the the lusts and desires of the flesh and of the mind, right? If I can come up with a, a philosophy that says that there is no devil, then he can't possibly control me. Now, does my philosophy have any bearing on external reality? You know, can I come up with a, th- a theory that says that gravity doesn't exist? I can, but obviously it does. And obviously it influences me every second of every moment of every hour of every day, right? I can come up with a, a, a theory, a hypothesis that says that the, the devil doesn't exist. It makes me feel better because I think, oh, I'm free. I can do what I want, when I want. Except that the Bible says he's still influencing you. He's still manipulating you. He's still playing you. Now, how about the Christian? The Christian, not of works, lest any man should boast. Because of good works, and God's mercy and God's grace that he planned for us before the beginning, he sealed us with his Holy Spirit. So now we have the GPS receiver. It's a bad example, but it's an external thing we didn't have before, and now all of a sudden we have it. And then we have the possibility of using it or not, right? Um, we're told that because now we have the Holy Spirit, there's a war going on, and the Holy Spirit is actually waging war against the old man and the sin nature and the flesh. Um, we now have the, the, the freedom, if you want to call it that, to be able to set our mind on the old stuff, which we always used to set our mind on, the things of the flesh, or we can now set our mind on things above, the things unseen, the things of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, faith, goodness, gentleness, kindness, patience, and self-control. Right, but we don't. We don't have to do that. So we 
we see from all of these scriptures, there is this absolute dichotomy in scripture. Either you are in the flesh or you are in the spirit. There is no in-between. There is no independent action. If you are in the flesh, you are played like a fiddle by Satan. He's puffing up your heart with lusts, even though the lusts make you feel like a lust is, I have a desire to do something. So I'm going to do what I feel like doing. And so you're saying to yourself, that's me. But actually, the Bible's telling us that it's coming externally from you. You have a sin nature and you're agreeing with it. But Satan is giving us and feeding us and is the power behind lust and desires. And we can follow those. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, we are compelled to follow those because there is no other choice, right? If we have the Holy Spirit, then we have the possibility of setting our mind on the things of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't set your mind on what you don't have, right? And we have the possibility of following God and doing the good things that he planned for us long ago, of being renewed after knowledge of him that saved us, right? Of being cleansed, of being made a new creation, which is a process. And so there is no, the Bible gives absolutely no room for any kind of middle ground where we are just acting on our own and of our own volition and of our own plan and purposes. There is always an external spirit which is influencing us. If we're in the flesh, it's the devil. And we're giving place to the devil. If it's um, doing what God wants, then the Holy Spirit is the one who is empowering us. He's filling us. He is enabling us. He's guiding us. He's leading us. He's convicting us. He's constraining us. We are walking after him and living in the life that he alone gives. This is the, um, the war of the mind that the spirit of a hu- any human who is sealed by the Holy Spirit faces because we are in this battle between God and Satan. We know ultimately that God is going to win. Satan is a little ant compared to God. Jesus, God, God is infinite and boundless. An ant is just kind of crawling around in the dirt. A serpent is slithering around on the dirt. Quite finite. Quite fragile, right? And so this this is the um, this is where we who identify as Christians and who believe that we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. This is where we find ourselves. Is our mind is in in a sense in a tug of war between the old man and the Holy Spirit. But ultimately, because God is God and because no one is more powerful than the Father and no one can snatch us out of His hand, He is going to prevail. And he is going to cause his purposes to be accomplished. And so being controlled by God as a a body, as a vessel, and our body is filled with the Holy Spirit as opposed to filled with other things and fully filled with the Holy Spirit, not just partially filled with the Holy Spirit. Because God is good and because he's faithful and because he's going to take care of us forever and because he's wiser and better than us and he made us and therefore he knows what we need. Like being controlled by the Holy Spirit is a wonderful thing. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. It is not, oh, I don't get to do what I want to do. What is freedom? And so this is, a, this is perhaps the, the perennial question of people who say free will. I want to believe that I have free will. Is, is, is true freedom you doing whatever you feel like doing? Especially whenever we see from these verses that people who are operating in the flesh, what they feel like doing is actually really not them. It's actually the prince of the power of the air who work the spirit that worketh in the sons of disobedience. Are you really having just your own independent feeling and therefore you're free? Or really is your feeling being influenced and derived from the prince of the power of the air who's playing you like a fiddle. Of course, let's admit, you would like to believe that you're independent. But God is better and God has better fruit than Satan. And people who belong to God are going to go be with God forever. And his, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His fruit is peace and love and joy and righteousness. Right, right acting, you're getting along with your neighbors and not at their throats and they aren't at your throats. It is a better to be controlled by God and is far more blessed and far more rich and far more satisfying ultimately 
to be set to be controlled by the spirit of God than it is to be pretending like you're free and pretending like you're independent but actually the prince of the power of the air is working in the sons of disobedience